Hey guys, welcome back to Vinceville Customs. So today we're going to do sort of like a quick work in progress video. I've done these in the past. Um, it's pretty much straightforward. I don't need to do a crazy series on them. So I figured I can film this while I'm painting it, give some tips and everything and go from there. So this is a Spider-Man kit. I did do a garage kit review on it a while back. I will link that in the description. Uh, you guys can pretty much check that out. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. It's a museum post Spider-Man. It's a red and black outfit, black spiders, white eyes, and a simple base and three heads. So it's pretty straightforward. There's not really much more to do to it. But other than that, uh, I talked to the client. He sent me a couple pictures of different Spider-Man stuff. We kind of hashed out the ideas and details. We're going for a spandex look where it's not flat red, flat blue, and then it's done. And we're not going metallic or pearl where it's really super shiny and like, you know, it's just glowing and stuff. So the idea is we want it more of like traditional spandex look for him. Now the way to do that is add pearls and add interference, but lightly, and then dull it down, like really matte finish it. So it's flat, but you still get a little bit of that uh, spandex look to it. So, I mean, if you ever looked at spandex or, you know, certain types of like, you know, people with jogging suits and stuff like that, they sort of have a shine, like a sheen to them, but they're still sort of flat at the same time. So that's kind of what we're going for. Now the other thing too is this Spider-Man is sort of like the idea is, you know, we we showed a couple pictures, like he's almost like in a back alley where there's sort of a light shining on him. So you'll see some brighter areas, but then you'll see some really darker areas. And that interference and pearls kind of will help, like when you turn him, you'll get like different looks of it. So that's kind of the idea. Now, as far as painting Spider-Man uh, and painting any statue, I always plan my attack in the beginning. You know, do you paint like this first, do you paint that first, do you paint this first and then have to mask all that off? I always find it's easier to start off with like skin tones or simple areas and then mask those off and then do the bigger area. Now you can with Spider-Man if you really wanted to do all the red first and then the blue, but I find that would be too much trouble because if you do all the red first, then what you have to do is you have to mask up around here, you have to mask up down here, around the belt, around this belt, around over there, and you got to mask off the feet, and you'll only be painting this small blue and this small blue, where it's easier for me just to paint the blue first, paint the blue here and here, and mask off these smaller areas, and then do all the red afterwards. So it's a matter of what you feel is a little bit easier and harder. So with Spider-Man, I find do the blue first, mask that off because it's a smaller area, and then do the red. So it all depends on how you want to paint up your item, but it's always easier to plan attack first. That's just, you know, for anyone that's getting new into the hobby or wants to start painting, think about the process first. Don't just start diving because you want to paint that one, you know, area, and then you realize, oh man, I got to mask it this way, I got to mask it that way, and then you might ruin it. So just plan those things out. Now, as far as the blue goes, we're going to just we'll start with that. Um, I have an arsenal of blue colors here. It's really simple. I'm going to do a base color of probably like this P3 uh, blue, which is uh, Cygnar blue. I don't know, something like that. So you can kind of see this blue. Um, it's just going to be a base color. I'll probably mix in a little bit of this game color as well. Get my base blue first. And then after that, what I'll do is I'll probably start doing some shading colors of uh, this uh, Badger Blue, which is a really great dark blue, but it's very, very liquidy. It's very watery, so you got to be kind of careful. And then, uh, you know, I'll mix in some blacks into that because, you know, I don't really like to throw, like, heavy, heavy blacks into the characters, but sometimes as a comic book character, you got to kind of go that route. But I'm not going to just take it and hit, like, straight on hard black into him unless the client and stuff, we send pictures and he wants to go that route. But... The idea is, even if I do do a couple hard blacks in there, um, I'll be going over with some pearl misting and some interference blue as well, and sort of kind of help bring it out and make it look a little spandexy. So we'll kind of go over that a bit. And then once that's done, like adding the pearls and the interference in there is going to be very, very shiny, even if you don't dull it down. So you want to dull it down. So we have this mecha varnish, uh, matte uh, varnish. It's really great stuff. It'll matte anything. So if you make, even if you sprayed him down with like straight pearls and you really wanted to make it like dull down, this stuff would dull it down to the point where it's got a different look to it. So that's kind of pretty much straightforward. Um, you know, we'll kind of start working uh, on the base coat. We'll start kind of going over some of the other stuff. Um, it should go fairly fast. Uh, like I said, today I'll probably do the blues, put them aside, let them cure up for the day, work on other projects, and then tomorrow or the next day I can just mask off the blues, do the reds. And once all the reds are done, it's a matter of detailing, you know, all the black lines, um, doing the eyes on each head. And then uh, after that, it's the base. So it's a pretty straightforward project. 
So uh, let me get set up. We'll start working on these blues and we'll get that out of the way today. Okay, so uh, I got my base coat down, and what I like to do is just kind of play with the colors for a bit, get used to where the paint is spraying, just see how things are looking. Uh, I'm not really a fan of going super harsh, harsh lines on stuff, but, you know, we want to at least show the muscles, but we want to kind of tone it down a little bit and hit it with certain air. So I just got to keep playing with the colors and where it's laying just to get a good, better look. Uh, so what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to water down some interference blue, uh, and I'm going to give it a misting of blue just to see how it looks and where it's going. And then after that, if I feel that I need a little bit more or it's maybe it's too uh, potent, I could do a little bit of uh, watered down uh, pearlized blue. And then from there, uh, I'm going to be layering. So it, it, there's really no set um, way of doing this. It's kind of like throwing down some color, seeing how it looks, maybe adding some others, taking some away, maybe making some shadows harsher, and keep going from there. But I want to keep some shadows here, but I don't want them to be super, super potent. But... You know, we got to kind of play with it. So I want to make sure it's not just looking blue and black shading. I want to kind of, you know, blend it out a little bit more. Okay, so uh, I really toned it a lot of it down with the interference blue, and we're getting it to where I want it to be. Um, it's definitely got like a silkiness look to it, but it's too shiny, of course. Once I dull it down, it'll look a little bit more like spandex. But what I want to do is I want to go in with a little bit of the uh, badger blue and work out some of the muscles a little bit more just to kind of uh, try to get a little bit of the harsh black out of there but still keep it shadow looking uh, but as you can see as he turns uh, you, you grab certain light with that interference so certain areas start to pop other ones start to kind of fade away so I kind of want to just work out the little, you know shadows a little bit more uh, see how that looks then what I might do is I might dull it down a little bit see how that looks and then just keep playing with it till I get it to where I want at any point, if I feel I'm not sure like how it's looking or where things are going, always kind of take like another piece of uh, paint, throw it next to it, and just kind of see where you're going. Because I did the red primer, it kind of helps a little bit too with some of that showing, uh, even though it won't be red like that. So I'm just going to keep playing with it and uh, see how this turns out. Okay, I'm really happy with where it looks right now. It feels like a nice spandex, um, especially what I did is I, I kind of hit it coming down this way with the interference and a lot of the shadowing underneath. So if you were to look underneath of him a little bit more, you get all that shadow. But if you look up top, you're getting the light hitting it. Uh, so definitely if it was in a nice dark corner, stuff would pop out of it. Uh, what I'll do is I'll kick on the lights a little bit so you can kind of see how it sort of does shine a little bit and pops with the lighting. Uh, so what I want to do is just dull it down a little bit. Just give it a nice coat of the matte uh, varnish to see how it looks. If I feel that I dull it down too much and it's kind of not where I want it, I go back and hit it with some interference. So, But I think that should pretty much pull it together. Alright, so I think we pretty much got it where I want it to go. It feels a little bit like spandex now. It's not too shiny, but it does have some sheen to it. The interference really makes it pop a lot. And... Uh, yeah, that's pretty much where I wanted to go with it. I mean, I don't know, in a camera, it might feel like there's really heavy shadowing there, but in person, it doesn't feel as bad. And that interference is actually pulling up all those little textures up, in, in the, especially in the uh, darker areas. So you don't you see the texture, but it's not as potent as it just spraying a harsh color. So, I mean, if you really wanted to, you could go in and do dry brushing and stuff, but if I start doing dry brushing, it's going to really change the whole look of it and I was trying to go more smooth but still see the texture as well so usually a step like this is where I stop I let it care up for the night I send pictures to the client show them what's going on 
if they say it's good, you know, then you just keep going with the next step unless they want to go a different route. But, you know, things evolve during the paint up. So this might be good to go or it might change. So we'll see what happens with the next step. Now on this step, I'm ready to start painting up the red. I masked off all the blue uh, so it's ready to be painted. But to make my life a little bit easier, I'm gonna just going to hit it with the primer, you know, the red primer again, uh, just to go over the blue. So this way everything will kind of be uniform. I'm not going to spray like crazy amounts of layers, just enough to kind of cover the blue, and then the red paint should go over pretty well. Uh, the problem is, is whenever you try to paint, like some of the reds that I've used in the past, like if I try to paint the red over the red oxide, it looks good. But then when you start getting over the blue, it starts showing like a little bit of purple and then you got to add so many layers onto it and it just makes life a pain. The same thing with the yellow. So if you want, if you were going to paint this area yellow now, the yellow would show through, uh, the blue would show through the yellow and you'll get a green. Uh, just some paints work that way. So you always got to kind of think about area. Now some people, what they might have done is they might have masked off all this area and then paint the blue and then mask off that. You can do that. I don't really do it. Um, I mean, I mean, a lot of the factory paint-ups that I've always stripped down, you know, I would always see that companies would probably do the whole item in a base blue, and then they would mask off the blue and then do the red. You could always kind of see that when you sand stuff or strip stuff. So, like, factories do it the same way. So, it's just kind of how I paint. So, I'm going to hit this up with the red primer, get that ready, and then we'll start getting the red onto all the items. So, the prime work is done. Uh, it took like literally like a minute. I mean literally I kicked on the booth. I sprayed it down very lightly and then uh, it covered up the blue You know really good, you know So the thing is you want to be very careful though is if you spray heavy paints whether it's primer a layer Acrylics whatever around your edging or your masking when you go pull your masking off later on You're gonna have like you know, it's gonna be like a step, but it's like very small scale So you have the base paint and then you have primer, but all that primer kind of gets in between the you know masking so when you go to mask off if you try to rip off the masking you might rip up the paint if it's kind of like you know a really super smooth surface you run into issues or you make it break it so you got to kind of be slow when you mask now I know some people use a uh, you know tape I don't like tape all my experience of years of using tape no matter what happens, it always pulls up the paint. Even if you just use the method where you put the paint on your t-shirt to get it like it non-tacky and you put it on, it doesn't work. And then I find other issues where if you try to put the tape on really, really tough around the edge, uh, so the water, you know, paint and stuff don't go in and bleed, you just, I don't know, I just have bad luck with tape. So I know there's a lot of people out there that love tape, they, they you know, they go with it. Me, I'd rather just get the five pound brick of uh, Silly Putty and you can see I masked it all off and it works out pretty well. Uh, this is just saran wrap. Uh, saran wrap, you just got to be a little careful. You know, you don't want to uh, tighten it around the item and let it sit there for like a day or two. Then when you rip it off, the saran wrap might stick to your paints if they're very wet or tacky or whatever. Uh, and you can also kind of mush up the paint, uh, especially if it's like clear coat and stuff. So you go on very loose and you make sure you take it off right away. You don't want saran wrap or your silly putty or any kind of masking sitting overnight. Now, on to the paints. So it's kind of like similar what we're doing with the blue, but we're going to be doing a little bit different. So the blue, we added black in there because that just kind of works with the color blue. Uh, you could kind of get some good shading and sort of, you know, kind of go with that purplish look and stuff. If you add browns into the blue, you kind of go away from the Spider-Man look, which still could look good, but not for this one. But for the reds, we're going to go browns instead of black because I don't want to throw black and brown because it's such a harsh you know, variation from red to black, it'll just make it look muddy. So we're gonna go dark brown, uh, burnt umber as the darkest color. So basically, I have Citadel Red. I'm gonna mix this up, thin it down a little bit. I love Citadel paints, they're absolutely amazing. The problem is, is there's such a small bottle, and I work on such large statues, so if you really wanted to use a lot of these paints, it gets very expensive, because you know, like one of these is like, what, five, six bucks maybe? But they're really good. Even thinning it down with some water, it goes on nice and smooth. So I'm going to paint him up base red. I'm going to make sure I get everything with the hands, the heads, the body, all in the base red. The next step is what we'll do is we'll mix up a little mahogany, which I love Vallejo mahogany. It's a really great color. It makes good uh, shading for red. Uh, it kind of creates like a leather, almost like a leatherish red. And I got some old Badger Opaque Crimson, which is really great. You can use this to thin down this, and you can use it to thin down this because uh, it's very watery instead of just using water. So that's something you can think about. I've never had issue with mixing one brand with another in acrylics as long as you kind of do your testing. Uh, so 
what we'll do is we'll darken up the areas. It'll kind of create a little bit of a leather look with the brown. And then for really, really dark areas, the burnt umber. Uh, I don't, I'm not going black, I'm just going burnt umber. So the idea is the red's going to be very dark. It's going to look leather. But then we're going to make a pop afterwards like we did with the blue. And we're going to use this red interference. Now, the red interference is sort of the same thing. Uh, so it's going to make it look a little silky. And then we dull it down. So it's going to look a little bit of a... Almost a little leathery with slash silkiness, I guess, because it's going to be a little bit of a variation. I think it should work out pretty well. Um, if you throw pearls, like red pearls, into red, the problem is it starts to go away from red and it starts becoming pink. Um, so I'm not really a fan of throwing too much pearls into red. Uh, you really have to find some kind of like a company or a mixture to make a really nice, like, you know, pearlized red. I've seen a lot of like uh, companies out there that got sort of good colors, but they just don't work. Like, uh, let's say, um, let's see, do I have one over here? No, I don't. I think I got rid of it. Uh, yeah, I, I did get rid of it. I just didn't like the color. Um, now I know uh, Garage Kit Colors has a metallic red. It still doesn't, you know, too much, uh, you know, pearls into it to start creating a pink. It's just one of those things. Um, one day I'll find a really nice, you know, pearlized red in a company that I think that works good for a lot of the superhero stuff, but we'll see. Uh, other than that, that's pretty much it. It's just a straightforward, uh, you know, trying to get it a nice leathery, silky look. we we'll dull it down afterwards. Uh, I might have to toy with it. If I feel I need to throw a little bit of pearl in there, we'll see, but, you know, I've got to be a little bit careful with that. Um, and then after that, we let him cure up. I might have to do some special clear coats just to make sure he's dry for a couple days because I'm going to be handling him to do all the line work. And then after that, um, finish detailing him up and he'd pretty much be done. working on this I'm also working on the heads but the problem is, is I can't have everything in the airbrush booth so I'm kind of doing it like on the side so as of right now I have the mahogany on there and I really like where the mahogany is I kind of like don't think I really want to go any darker than this but I might have to I'm not really sure uh, so I'm kind of debating a little bit I might do a quick test and maybe what I'll do is a watered down version of the uh, burnt umber maybe mix up with some of the red Hit some areas that should be a really, really dark, but not too dark. And then after that, I'm going to start misting over the interference red on it and see how it starts looking. If I see like it's going where I want it to be, that's kind of where I'll go. If I need to add some more colors or if I need to take the darkness out, I might. Uh, I'm just a little bit weary when you put black in the red because it might be a little too overpowered. And I'm still looking at the artwork. And there's really not a lot of black in there. There is, but it's, you know, I mean, comic book art, you got to throw black in. There's nothing you could do about it. But, you know, I want to try to make this look good, but not just be like red, black, and that's it. I don't know. So I got to kind of like play with it and see where it goes. So uh, I pretty much got it to where I wanted and uh, what I did is I had to actually paint it with the heads on. I had to kind of like get all these parts over there kind of like matched because you don't want to paint up an item in separate pieces and then put it together and realize you didn't match it all up correctly. And the same thing with the arms because I realized that you know if I'm putting shadow over here and it's not fluid going up the arm it doesn't really make sense. So as for a quick tip uh, for masking. Uh, like if you spray too heavy or if you did like like candy coats or something, you run into the issue like I said before where 
you know, you're putting too much paint with the seam. So if you have yourself a dentist tool or something or anything, what you could do is you can take your time and you can sort of start pulling the silly putty away. Now, don't worry if a little silly putty like that gets stuck in there. Um, you, that pops out easy, but it pretty much works out very well. You know, if you kind of just go slow and you do it, it works out. Like if you have any, you know, it's... Just take your time. Some spots might have a little extra paint, others might not. It all, it all depends on everything. So just to give a quick like idea of where I'm at. So we got the blue nice and shiny with the pearl and the red is sort of pearlized but it's not as heavy because uh, if I go any further with making pearl on this red it becomes pink. Um, or not pearl with the interference. Uh, it just it just becomes a nightmare and it's just going to look very weird. Plus, once you start adding these black lines, a lot of this bl uh, red kind of goes. But there is a hint in there, but it's not as heavy. So I kind of like it so far with the blue being fairly shiny and the red sort of being shiny. Um, it's kind of hard to see with the lighting because I got it like right there in front of it. But let's get the camera down a little bit more. Maybe we can kind of see a bit. So, I mean, it's there, it's looking good, uh, so you just gotta kinda take your time, just kinda go through it. Now, sometimes I know certain paints I can just rip the putty right off and I know it's not going to grab, other times you never know. Only because I did primer at the bottom, I wanna make sure, okay? So, that's looking pretty good. Now, if you take a little piece, you know, be careful because if it's wet paint, you don't wanna get anything messed up. There is a little chunk right up here, um, let's see what we got. So there is a little bit of a chunk like right here. So if you just take your silly putty, you kind of just go in there nice and smooth, it comes right out. Now if your paint, paint is wet though, and you start putting silly putty all like that, then yeah, you're gonna mess it all up. That's what you don't want to do. But other than that, uh, it kind of comes together pretty well. So I'm actually looking at my screen right now and I'm looking at the artwork and I think I got as fairly close to the red as possible. Because looking at the artwork again, the red doesn't have really heavy blacks in it. It just got the brown. So I'm thinking I'm capturing it pretty well. Of course, you know, like I always say, you know, I did it this way. I'll send pictures to the client. If they're like, no, nah, I want it punched up a little bit more. or No, I like where it's at. We kind of go from there. But right now I'm kind of liking it. I think this is kind of a really good color system for Spider-Man's. Especially with this texture on the blue and because there's no texture here on the red. I'm not grabbing it, but it still works So let me get this unmasked and we'll get back in the studio and look at it tomorrow I'm just gonna let it dry. Uh, it's kind of late anyway tonight kind of pushing it So if I let me unmask uh, take all the masking off let it sit and dry come back tomorrow Hopefully we get some sunlight here and there we can look at it in different lighting All right, so now it's all tedious work basically a good thing like this you just throw on some music uh, get yourself some paint get comfortable and it's just a matter of doing all these black lines. Now, if you take your time, you won't mess up a lot. But sometimes you do mess up. Uh, you know, it's good to have some paint that will actually kind of like maybe rub away and it won't like stain too much. So I like to use Vallejo Model Air Paint. Uh, even though it's made for the airbrush, it's still great. It's thin. You can uh, shake it up pretty well. Put a little couple drops on a, you know, container and sit and paint all the lines and just keep going. So... During this whole process, what I normally do is I'll sit here and I'll paint a bunch of lines, uh, maybe take a break and move to the next one. If any time my hands actually feel like, you know, I need to wash them, I wash them because I don't like using rubber gloves. I find that using rubber gloves, working with painting, uh, I can't really feel the item and sometimes I got paint on the gloves, I touch something, I don't know what's going on. So I'd rather just run to the bathroom which is right next to me and just keep washing my hands. Uh, what I also like to do is get a decent uh, paintbrush as you can kind of see. Uh, thin but long so at least hold some paint. You don't want one of those super small tiny ones because then you'd only be able to do one little line and have to get paint one long. So if you have enough that kind of at least gets you a nice fairly long line, it'll work. Um, normally what I need to do too is sort of uh, start with a little bit of paint, practice a line or two and start getting the feel just to make sure that this paintbrush is working okay. You know sometimes paintbrushes the you have a random strand that'll stick out and you got to get a different one. You know it just be, uh, be wary of all that. Um, but yeah, it's just a lot of tedious work. I'm not going to film it. It's just a matter of sitting here uh, for a few hours doing a bunch of lines, see how far I can get today. Um, and when I work on the body, that's a little bit different. What I usually do is put a big, uh, you know, old towel on the desk, uh, use some of this foam uh, wrap that I use for a lot of my statues, and just sit there and do the lines on the body slowly. 
uh, especially because you don't want to keep handling the whole body and mess everything. So it's good to have something soft, do a couple lines here and there. So yeah, this is the tedious part about a Spider-Man. Uh, the red and blue go f super fast. The black line work takes forever. But if you take your time and you get through it, it'll get done. Uh, so I'm just going to do this, and by the time we come back, uh, hopefully we can start tweaking out the eyes, uh, seeing if there's anything else, and then working on the base. Okay, so uh, I did all the line work today on the heads, the hands, and all the red there. Uh, so right now I'm going to work on the spider in the back. It's pretty much the same paints I used before on all the red, and I'm doing this now. The only reason why I wanted to do the spider at the end, instead of trying to mask all this off here and do all that and accidentally rip something, it's easier to kind of focus in sections, and it just makes life a little bit easier than having so much different silly putty. And then, you know, if you mess up this part here, and you didn't realize you hit this part over here, sometimes it becomes a pain. So I'm just going to need a nice light coat of the red uh, primer, paint it, and then it's ready to go. I just got to mask up the legs a little bit too real quick just to make sure. So it's time to paint up the eyes. And what I did is I masked off to the very edge of the black. Um, I'm going to airbrush the white uh, because... Airbrushing white makes life a lot easier. I'm going to be using the Wicked Colors white. I love this white. It's probably my favorite white out in the market so far that I've tested. I never really have any issues until you get to the bottom of the bottle. Because I buy those really big bottles, so 16 ounce. And uh, sometimes the bottom of them have like a lot of little gunky stuff on it. So they got to kind of throw it away. But fresh bottles and stuff is really great. goes on really smooth and it doesn't crack like a lot of other companies. And then uh, once I do the white... I'll go back to the interference blue and I'll put the interference blue over it. Now that's going to create sort of a off-white. If you look at it, you know, like if it's a flat white, if you just kind of like flatten it. But we want to make these look sort of like plastic looking almost. So once I do the interference blue over it and then I gloss coat it after I do the black line work, uh, it'll make it look shiny and it'll look like a plastic on his eye. Um, for the black, it's, instead of sitting there trying to, you know, do the white and then mask over the white and then airbrush the black and then you get bleeding and stuff, it's better just to go with a black, you know, paintbrush and just do the black line and then remask it again and hit it with a clear coat. Uh, trying to sit there, trying to do so small stuff with an airbrush, it just makes life, you know, really hard. Um, but black, you know, one black paintbrush coming here and then uh, here, you don't, you're not getting strokes if I had to sit here and paint these huge eyes with white and you get all those strokes on it. So airbrushing the white and then painting the black line work and then gloss coating it afterwards will make life a lot easier. Um, so and also when you're painting with the white you don't have to sit there and like use a heavy airbrush and hold, like hose it down. You know my fine airbrush with a little low PSI just build it up slowly you know just a little bit build it up a little so this way you don't bleed into the uh, masking areas and you have all that stuff there. Just focus on the main part of the eye where the white is with the low PSI and it works out fine. So uh, I'll be doing the base white, the interference over it. I'll take off the masking off camera. I'll do the uh, black line work and then I'll mask it again and do the clear coat. And then after that, we focus on the base. Okay, so Spider-Man is all finished up for now. Now, this is kind of like one of those projects that um, what's going to happen is I'll have to kind of come back to it later on because uh, this Spider-Man has a companion piece, which is a Venom statue. Now, supposedly that kit is not going to be out for a little while. So the client, you know, we talked about it. They want both bases to match. So do you want Spider-Man next to Venom and have the bases match? Now, the problem is if I paint up Spider-Man now... And say Venom doesn't come out for months and I can't get the same paint, I don't paint it the same way, I don't do it the same layering, the bases might not look the same. Plus, we want to come up with something where they both look good on the base next to each other. So I said, why don't we do this? We'll leave Spider-Man as is, you can display him like this, and then down the line when you get Venom, you can give me that base, you can give me this base and the Venom kit, and I can paint them all at the same time, and everything will look uniform. So it works. You know, it's just something that's going to be like late. So at least the main figure is done, 
and the bass pretty much, you know, will get tweaked down the line. Of course, you know, when I get that Venom kit, I do a video on it. Maybe the client will be able to send me a picture of it on the display, and we'll see both of them next to each other and kind of run with it like that. But at least, you know, you get to see how I painted this up, how he went for more of that silky look, which I think works for him. So the red's not too crazy. Like, the camera might not pick up these pearls and the interferences, but it still feels silky, and it's kind of like more of like... I don't know, it feels almost like that old uh, school TV show, but not that silky. It's kind of more satin. And plus, the uh, texture on the blue uh, areas kind of really help make it pop a little bit more. Now, the other thing, too, is the big-eyed version of Spidey. Uh, what happened is they sent me a picture of, I guess somebody must have did a really cool design where they did, like, this honeycomb design. Basically, you paint the eyes in, like, a darker blue, just kind of like a really, like, light but darker blue than white. And then what you do is you put the honeycomb uh, pattern over the eye and you spray it white and you'll get that honeycomb look like the movies. Now the problem was I had uh, fishnets for an anime kit I did. It really didn't look that good. And then I said, okay, let me go out to some hobby stores and then like a Joanne's fabric store and stuff like that. I went to all these places. I can't find anything that's got some kind of a honeycomb pattern of what they showed me. Because every hobby store I went to is just out of everything. Because of the whole COVID... Stuff hasn't been produced. Um, you know, people are working from home, taking up hobbies. So they're ordering stuff. They're going to hobby stores. Stuff is just dried up everywhere. So it's really hard to find things. So this might be something I have to come back to down the line. I'm not really sure yet. We'll see what happens. But for right now, it worked out pretty well. So I just got to do a little bit more tweaks on the uh, big eyed version. Just kind of clean it up a bit for the client. But other than that, we're pretty much ready to go. So that is pretty much the Spider-Man paint up. Uh, hopefully you guys like the video. Hopefully it gives you some tips, gets you an idea if you wanted to paint up your Spider-Man, but you didn't want to go too heavy on blacks or shading. You want to make it a little bit more silky and satin look to them, and you can run with it that way. So thanks for watching, and we'll be back with some more videos.